In this video, I'll be solving an example for the unsymmetric bending section. I'll give you a moment to pause and read through the question on your own, and if you'd like, you can use this opportunity to solve this problem on your own before we get started. Alright, so we're told that the beam is subjected to an inclined uniformly distributed load of 35 kilonewtons per meters. Based on the cross section below, the inclined load is applied at an angle of 60 degrees from the top of the beam and this load distribution is applied along the full length of the beam, which in this case is 6 meters. The problem is asking us to determine the normal stress due to bending at each corner of the cross section. In other words, we have to solve for the normal stress at points A, B, C, and D. The question is also asking us to determine the angle of the neutral axis, or in other words, we have to solve for alpha. Before we get started, there are a few things we should keep in mind. We can ignore the torsional effects that are produced by the load because torsional effects result in shear stress and as the problem mentions, we're only interested in the normal stress produced by the load. We're also able to assume that the beam is simply supported. In other words, we'll need to examine M max. Before we're able to tackle this problem, the first thing we'll have to do is break up the inclined load into the WY and WZ components. I've drawn the diagram with the corresponding components on the right. We'll be able to figure out the values for the components by using W along with the corresponding angle 60 degrees. Based on the right triangle, WZ is equal to 17.5 kN per meters and WY is equal to 30.3 kN per meters. Now on the following slide, we'll begin solving for the first part of the question regarding the normal stress for each point. As you may recall from the lecture video, the normal stress equation is as follows. If you want to figure out what the normal stress is, the first thing we'll have to do is figure out what mz and my is, and that's basically what we'll be doing on this slide. We'll figure out the remaining variables later in the video. Notice how the beam has two fixed ends. This just means that the support can resist reaction forces in both the z and y direction in response to wz and wy respectfully. If you were to draw the free body diagram for both the z and y component, you'll quickly realize how it's exactly the same. In order to save some time, I'll draw a generic free body diagram that would apply for both cases and relabel the load as w. Now we'll have to solve for the reaction forces at the supports. If you were to sum the forces in the vertical direction, we'd end up with WL divided by 2 going downwards at each support. As I mentioned near the beginning of the video, we assumed that the beam was simply supported, and so we needed to find M max. For a beam like this, M max occurs at the midspan of the beam, and so if we take a cut at the midspan, we'll end up with the following FVD diagram. Now if we choose counterclockwise as our positive notation and sum the moments, we'll end up with the following moment equation at the midspan. On the following slide, we'll use this general equation and figure out what mz and my is. On this slide, we'll use the equation we developed on the previous page to solve for mz and my. I've included the general equation along with the variables we'll be using on the corner of the page. Keep in mind, we'll have to modify the equation for each moment. We'll start with mz. As I mentioned in the lecture video, we'll need to use wy. This is simply because mz is produced by the distributed force along the y direction. If you plug in the corresponding values, we'll end up with negative 136.4 kilonewton meters. Now let's move on to my. For my, we'll need to use wz since my is produced by the forces along the z direction. If you plug in the corresponding values, we'll end up with negative 78.8 kilonewton meters. On the following slide, we'll be figuring out the remaining variables for the total normal stress equation. On this slide, we'll figure out the z and y components for each point, along with the moment of inertia about the z and y axis. Alright, so I've drawn the cross section for the beam along with the corresponding moments. We'll determine the coordinates for each point by simply observing the location of the point with respect to the positive axes. For instance, let's look at point A. The Z component for this point is 125 millimeters and the Y component is 200 millimeters. 
This part is pretty straightforward, so I won't go through each point individually. So here are the coordinates for the remaining points. Now let's look at the moment of inertia. Since the cross section is a rectangle, the equation is simply base times height cubed divided by 12. So the moment of inertia about the z-axis is approximately 1,333 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeters to the power of 4. And the moment of inertia about the y-axis is approximately 521 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeters to the power of 4. On the following slide, we'll begin plugging in all the values we saw for so far. On this slide, we'll be solving for the normal stress at each point. I've included all the variables and the corresponding values on the right. I wanted to save some time, so I already converted all the values to newtons and meters. Alright, so let's start with point A. The normal stress equation at point A is as follows. If you plug in the corresponding values, we'll end up with 1.55 MPA. Now let's move on to point B. We'll follow the same process as before and plug in the corresponding values. After we simplify the equation, we'll end up with 39.37 MPA. Due to the lack of space, I won't write out the complete equation for the remaining two points, but it's pretty straightforward from here. All you have to do is follow the same process as before and plug in the corresponding values for each point. For point C, the normal stress should equal 39.37 MPA, and the normal stress at point D should equal negative 1.55 MPA. Now that we've solved for the normal stress at each point, we can finally move on to the second part of the question. On the following slide, we'll determine the orientation of the neutral axis. On this slide, we'll be solving for the orientation of the neutral axis. We'll start off by drawing the normal stress distribution along the edge of the cross section. I've included the normal stress for each point on the corner of the page. Alright, so we'll start at point A and work our way around the cross section. So the normal stress at point A is positive 1.55 MPA. Since it's positive, it means that point A is under tension. And so the normal stress is pointing away from the edge of the cross section. Now let's move on to point B. The normal stress at point B is positive 39.4 MPA. And so it's also under tension. So that means the top edge of the cross section is under tension from point A to B. Now let's look at point D. The normal stress at point D is negative 1.55 MPA. Point D is under compression and so the normal stress is pointing towards the edge of the cross section. At some point between point B and D, the normal stress is equal to zero. For now, we'll assume it's right here. Now let's move on to point C. The normal stress at point C is negative 39.4 MPA. Since point D is also negative, it means the bottom edge is under compression between the two points. Now we'll move on to side CA. The normal stress at C is negative 39.4 MPA, and the normal stress at A is positive 1.55. At some point between the two points, the normal stress is equal to zero. For now, we'll assume it's here. Now, if we connect the two dots and draw the line through the geometric center of the cross section, we'll have the neutral axis. But the issue is, we don't know its orientation. So we'll have to figure out what alpha is. If we want to solve for alpha, we'll need the following equations. I've also included the corresponding values for the variables we'll be using. If you want to solve for alpha, we'll first have to solve for theta. So if we take this equation here and isolate for theta, and plug in the corresponding values, we'll end up with 30 degrees. Now if you take this equation, isolate for alpha, and plug in the corresponding values, we'll get an answer of approximately 55.9 degrees. And this angle represents the orientation of the neutral axis. On the following slide, I'll include a summary of everything we solved for throughout the video. So here's a quick summary of the solution for the problem, which includes the normal stress for each point, along with the orientation of the neutral axis. Now this concludes the video regarding the example for unsymmetric bending. In the following video, we'll be discussing combined load.